Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here at the UFL gym in Shanghai, China. Today, I'm going to demonstrate a takedown from a body lock. This is actually the first takedown I ever learned. This technique is brought to you by NoGiBJJGear.com. Links in the description below. Use my code for a 10% discount on everything. In modern mixed martial arts, most takedowns actually happen against the barriers. Here I'm doing it up against the ropes. More commonly, you would do it in a cage. I couldn't finish the high single, so I transitioned to a body lock takedown. If you're on the open mat and you can get double underhooks, notice I've got a, I've got a gable grip right here. Okay, you should know what that is. All the fingers together, palm to palm, fold the fingers over the top. It's one of the strongest grips the hands can make. Do not confuse it with this because the thumbs will come off and then you'll lose it. So make sure it's a gable grip, palm to palm. Or we can use an S grip. Both of these grips are good. So if I get double underhooks, I got this, and I'm going to work the hands down to the lower back. All right, notice when I pull on the lower back, let's show this from the side, it will pull him out this way. Now, I need my head at the top of the chest. So now I pull here and I push here, and I can put him on the ground. It's because broken posture makes you weak. Broken posture is any time your head, neck, and spine are bent in the wrong direction. This way, this way, this way. Right? For example, if, if I bend his chin in a different direction than his hips, now he's in a really weak position. For example, there's a, a sweep that I like if we're doing Muay Thai. I'm gonna get in there, get a single collar tie, and we'll see how he goes. It's a, it's a really easy sweep to do if you have a good grip. Why? Because it breaks the posture with torsion this way. And then I just block this ankle right there. Now, if you get really straight, if I don't have his head and I start pulling maybe on the shoulder, look what happens. You can balance really easily, right? Just like if I pull on the back but I don't push his upper body forward, Nothing happens. He's really strong there. So we have to break his posture like this. There's one force pushing this way here, and there's one force pushing this way here, and you'll notice, yeah, even with light pressure from the hands, that's enough. So we get and I push. Now, I'm a lot bigger than him, so it might look like I'm just muscling him to the ground. Here, you do it to me. On his first attempt, my training partner has his head off center and his shoulders are much too low to reach my sternum, so he's not able to do it. Watch the adjustment he makes as he places his forehead directly in the center of my sternum. Perfect. My head pushes his upper body back. My grip pushes his lower body forward. Okay? Pulls his lower body forward. Right? Now, here's a problem you might run into on the open mat. In here, get, get a body lock. On the open mat, I can stall my hips down, and I can keep him from, from pulling my lower body in like this. If I'm here, I'm toast, right? But on the open mat, I can get my hips back, right? But if you're fighting in a ring or in a cage, this is where it gets interesting, because if he's up against here, come over here, take a look. Notice now, he can't sprawl his hips back. Can you sprawl? Right, can you get your hips behind you? No, we can't. And now I can do that same thing from the turbo. Okay? Watch as I perform this same technique up against the cage in an exhibition fight. I did an exhibition fight where I did this from an over-under clinch. And ordinarily, that means one underhook and one overhook. Ordinarily, there's no way in the open mat I could do that. Well, you totally can, but you have to make angles. We'll get into that in a minute. I just can't get low enough. He's got his hips back too far. But if I get him up against the corner, up against the trim buckle, or a cage, look what I can do. I can push his shoulders in, I can pull this back, and then I can get him down, even from an over under clinch. So I can't get up here, so I can use the wall. So I'll push him back up against the wall, and I will straighten him up. Now he's straight. Now I can get my grip down here. Okay, you'll notice my shoulder is now up in my chest. If I'm shorter, I can use my head. If I'm taller, I can use my shoulder. Okay, now I can pull them down here. Okay, so I've got an over under clench, under hook here, over hook here. He's strong on his hips back. I push him up here. I walk him up flat. I can run behind either a gable grip or an S grip. 
here I've got an S grip. Now I push his upper body in, pull his lower body toward me. Now we can put him on the floor. Okay? You're gonna feel like it's uh, like you're a lot weaker than you think you should be if your posture is broken this way. There's only so far back you can go until you're forced to fall down. You do that to me with the over under is in the trim. So he's got an over under clinch, he pushes me in here, he locks me up so I can't scroll. And now look, same thing. So one more time, on the open mat, we can do this with double unders, okay? And up against the cage or a turnbuckle, we can do it with an over-under clinch. Walk him up straight so he can't scroll. Pull the lower body in, and we go. There are two ways you can do this with the head. Now, I'm gonna pull with my hands right below belt level either way with a gable grip or an S grip, but I'm gonna push. If I'm shorter than Bruce, I'm gonna put my forehead right on his sternum to get that upper extension. If we're the same height or if I'm taller, now I can put my shoulder right here. I don't know if you can get a close up, put on the shoulder right here. Now I can put my shoulder right on the sternum right there, and now I can get that same hyper extension. So this can give me the same result as this. But if I'm a little short guy, and my shoulder comes up to his belly, That'll never work, right? But if I'm short, get my head in there, that'll work just fine too. Also, this works really well with an over-under clutch, right? I've got an over-under clutch, he has an underhook. I have an overhook, so I drive him into here, and now I walk him up, and look, now I can do this body lock take there. Chris and I, we, we had a, an exhibition match, and he actually had a reverse collar tie. Watch when we clinch up, Bruce gets a frame with a reverse collar tie in between us. This can be a powerful control mechanism to create space. So I'm going for, for the body lock, and he takes this arm, hangs up in between like this. Okay. On the open mat, there's no way I could get between that. So I push them up against the fence right here, type of in the back, and get the takedown like that. Here, you try the same thing. Just go for the over under clutch, right? Bring this up, walk me up against the wall. Right. Okay, we're in an over-under clinch. Okay? I have an underhook, I have an overhook. Right, if I try this from here, he sprawls his hips back. I sprawl my hips back. So I gotta change my angle. Now watch the feet. Watch the whole body. Okay? So from here I'm gonna step. And I'm gonna lift him up there. And I'm gonna like this. Okay? So now I step here, pinch him really tight. I elevate him this way, like I'm going to throw him with a, a suplex. And I can also do that same takedown right there. We can turn, we can turn this body lock into a suplex, right? So, this is right here, he's throwing his hips out. Then we want to step over here, elevate. Now, drop into that. Walk for it. Okay, let's, uh, you want to give that a right. yeah. So he's going to step, make a leg sandwich right there. All right. Little bit. I want you to watch the legs. Right. So I want my legs to step boom, right here boom, and squeeze his leg. Okay, so again. And now I'm going to push here and push here for hyper step. So yeah. one more time, and this is great. Step, step. All right. Good. Same thing, Bruce. Okay, so he steps, squeezes his legs through my leg, and... Pay attention to the details on the footwork right here. As I step, making a leg sandwich, squeezing his leg in between mine, and more importantly, driving my hips into his hips, or more specifically, my pelvis into his hips, so that I can either lift or rotate him. All right, try that one out. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train. Once again, shout out to the channel sponsor, NogiBJJGear.com. Use my code RAMSEY10 for a 10% discount on everything. They make fantastic rash guards, spats, shorts, t-shirts, and more. Check them out, fantastic designs for all your needs in Nogi, BJJ, MMA, and submission grappling. Once again, that is nogibjjgear.com. Links in the description below.